Today on Houston Life, it's time to tackle those home chores with four must-have items to keep your pad clean and organized. Plus, how one woman overcame cancer while going through a divorce only to reinvent herself for the next chapter of life. And Joe Sam talks with one local Supercross racer that's not letting the dangers of the sport keep him from achieving his goals. That and more is happening today on Houston Life. Studio B at KPRC Channel 2. Houston Life starts now. Well, welcome to Houston Life, everyone. It is Tuesday, January 19th. This is the first time in a month that I've been back in studio. Don't I know it? Yes, and our friend Andy Sirota is joining us today for the first time filling in for Derek Shore today. I'm giving you a hug yes, from across friend. the desk, a big virtual hug. I know. I'm so glad you're here. It's your first time co-hosting. It is. I'm a little nervous. Stop it. You don't need yes, to be nervous. You're a, a professional. We'll have some fun. We've got a lot of stuff to get to because yeah. we want to get to know you, and we've got a good slideshow coming up. But I want to talk about, of course, construction for Habitat for Humanity. This is, you know, it's moving right along at the site of our 2021 Habitat home. This is in Northeast Houston. We've been talking about it now. We are in day six. Our crews have been working hard to get everything ready for Alma Armendariz and her family. Yeah, I mean, she's been putting in her sweat equity. Yeah. she's earning the home and she's going to pay a mortgage once the house is complete. This is just one example of how Habitat for Humanity is giving back to the community and bringing families closer to their dreams of owning a home. It's so fantastic, Andy, and I know you and I have been part of the build here at KPRC for a number of years, and every homeowner, you know, they have their own stories, but I think the end result is so true for each and every one of them because it's all about homeownership, pride and in what they're building and owning and it's such a heartwarming story to hear um you know where they've come sort of how it started and how it ends for them and there's nothing like seeing the look on their face when they walk through yeah. the threshold for the very first time and just take in that moment mm -hmm. where they realize this is mine my family has a roof over their heads. Absolutely. And so many people dream for their entire lives to own mm -hmm. a home. And so I, I love that we're sharing the story and getting to know the family. Uh, a lot of work still needs to be done on the home, but of course we're here. We're going to take you um, on that road with Alma and the rest of her family. So, okay. Okay. You here we go. Have some fun? Are Let's you in the dig in. Seat? Let's dig in. Yet? I've got my heels <laughs> dug in. I'm ready to go. Well, Andy, you have you and I. We were just chatting because you were doing a Facebook yes. Live, and um, you and I came to Houston at the same time, same year, 2003. I started here at KPRC January 2003. Actually, I think it's this week that I started. Is this the Columbia uh, Explosion Week, or is that oh, next boy. the anniversary? I think it's next it's week. Close to it, yeah. That's the week I started. Okay. Unfortunately, um, but 2003, and then you followed in. May of 2003. Right. And you were one of the first reporters that I met on the street. I think it was something like a breaking news story. And I feel like, you know, we instantly hit it off we did. and made that connection. And here we are 18 years later Crazy. sitting next to one another. I mean, we've obviously anchored newscasts together we have. throughout our careers mm -hmm. and, and my tenure here at KPRC, but we've never done anything like this. At all. Where it's a little off the cuff, <laughs> it's a lot unscripted. But it's fun, and that's yes. the thing, we want to get to know you. So this is a flashback. Tell, I forgot about this photo. Okay, this is from 2009, so this is... Uh, not a throwback Thursday. What is it? What do we call it on Tuesdays? I don't know I don't what know. we call it on what Tuesday. Throwback Tuesday. This is from 2009. <laughs> yes, Escape uh, Center Celebrity okay. Server Benefit. You and I have done those uh, for a number of years. Absolutely. Throughout this our time Tony's. here in Houston. This is at Tony's. Mm, such a great time. I found one too. I dug oh one up for you. Let's see. Oh, us and the Rockettes. Do you yes, remember that? I do. We did a little kick. We did the little stand. I couldn't find that photo, but this one's just as good. Uh, listen, I think this was you don't need to find a photo of me kicking anything. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a suit and tie. At I least. know, but it was so much fun. And we, ha you know, what I love about you, Andy, is that you're so real. From social media, you know, you you tell your stories about home and and your fur babies and traveling and all of that. But I think what's so cool is the memorable story 
stories that you've done here and the amount of travel. Let's face it, when we're buck, young buck reporters, the reason why we start this business is because not only we want to tell stories, yes, we do, but we want to travel. Right. And, you know, pre-pandemic, I was doing a lot of traveling. Yeah. You know, I've got that wanderlust inside of me. Um, two of the most memorable assignments that I've had in my 26 years of being a, a broadcast journalist have been here at KPRC. The first, back in 2015, so we're going back six years now, a trip to Rwanda. Fantastic. To showcase the Houston Zoo and the wonderful work that they're doing there to save the mountain gorillas. The picture you're looking at right now, this is from my latest trip this is to brazil right the pantanal in october of 2019 this is a picture uh from rwanda during our trek through volcanoes national park i mean just unbelievable the the opportunities that i've been afforded as a broadcast journalist especially during my time here right at kprc and, and that for me is is what i love most is really being out in the elements right you know it, it doesn't have to be neat and clean i mean to really get out there and tell stories that are are really impactful and 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 make a difference in the community that's Absolutely. what i love most well those stories have all been so wonderful and i think it's perfect for you because at the end of the day i mean you're kind of an explorer right i am i'm an amateur explorer yeah, and an adventure amateur. seeker yeah what's your like favorite thing that you've done as far as adventure i mean are you like a skydive you're not a skydive kind of guy so it's funny that you mentioned that my 20th birthday my birthday gift from my brother who's four years older we went skydiving no way jumped out of a plane yeah tandem so okay. we each had an instructor with us um this is when i was living back in colorado going to college and uh yeah it was uh quite a surprise and i'm scared of heights so oh, you know my word right. see i couldn't do that and I'm, I'm still scared of right heights. Now. It did not erase the fear at all. Yeah. And you, what about, you also like boating and... I love being out on the water. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing like it. Just gives you just that sense of peace and calm. And I love being in the mountains. I love going on long hikes. Right. You know, pre-pandemic, you know, Yellowstone National Park, Glacier National Park. I mean, these are true gems in our country, treasures that, I mean, everyone, if they get a chance, they should certainly uh, take time and explore. And we need to talk about your babies. Oh, my goodness. I know. Maxwell and Theo. Oh, they're so cute. I love all your pictures that you post on them and on Instagram. I'm very partial to the Frenchies. I know, but they're so sweet. You know, growing up, we had pugs, so that's why I like Frenchies, too, because they're mm -hmm. very similar, that same personality. Um, okay, so typically what we do here at Houston Life, Andy Sirota, my dear friend, is we like to play a game okay and I know you're nervous um, so this one is is actually harmless we're gonna play um, two truths and a lie but since you really like to be on the water we're gonna name it which one's the sinking ship I don't know you said harmless now I'm worried <laughs> <laughs> I should be worried right yeah. yeah so we have two truths okay one lie basically which one is the sinking ship okay. so you get to go first and I get to guess right Andy's gonna read what's on the what's on the full screen here so people can play at home I believe yes. that's correct okay all right let's see which one's the sinking ship? I used to work in real estate. Okay. All right. I worked as a server at the Vanity Fair Oscars party, rubbing shoulders with Hollywood's elite. Okay. All right, you ready for the last one? Uh -huh. I once drove cross country in a 1972 baby blue Volkswagen van that I bought on eBay. Oh my word. Come on, CZ. Okay, so I originally was gonna say that number two was the truth because you worked in LA, but now I think I'm gonna go with number three, just based on your tone. Number three is the? Is the, oh, oh, okay, so, um, okay, I'm gonna say number three is the lie. Do Ladies I know and you? gentlemen, she knows me. Shut up, are you serious? <laughs> yes. Number three is the lie. Okay. Yeah. No, well, sounds thought, sounds like amazing, it, right? I almost thought maybe you might have done it, but I just know you, you wouldn't have done you wouldn't have bought it on eBay. I just have a feeling, you know, I don't know, a little risky. But you, I didn't know you worked in real estate. I did. I had my real estate license huh. for a while. Yes, when very, I lived in California. Very interesting. Yeah. Texas, very lovey today. Oh, I loved it. Okay, so, so are you ready for mine? I had to change one of mine because I think you knew one of my truths, so I had to change it last minute. So, which one is the sinking ship? Okay. I spent a summer working on a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. I can't whistle. I can deadlift 255 pounds. Uff. Which one is the lie? I'm going to say... Or which one is the truth? Which one is the lie? 
Which I, one's a lie? I, I'm gonna guess here that you can't whistle. No, that's true. <laughs> you can't whistle? That's not the lie? <laughs> no, wait a minute, I'm getting this, I'm, I'm, I'm messing this up. Which, which is one the, is the lie? Which one is the lie? You spent a summer working on a cruise ship. Are you sure? But you can, I know you're a huge CrossFitter, so I know you can deadlift. You're not one to mess with when it comes to fitness. <laughs> you're right, ah. I did not. But you know what, it was a dream of mine to work. Maybe one day I'll work in the, on a cruise Did you ship. want to be like Julie McCoy, the social director? Yes, no, I wanted to be like an ice skater or like oh. a Las Vegas showgirl, you know, yeah. like on a cruise ship. Okay. I'm not sure how that translates. What does that mean? That's very strange. Well, listen, we all have <laughs> things called encore careers in our lives, there right? There you go. Second act. You you never can tell. Uh, listen. If I'm going to happen to... I know, wouldn't put it past you. We did book a you. cruise last year. Yeah. Terrible year to book a cruise. Yeah, so you never know no when doubt. that's going to happen. Um, okay, so lots of fun to be had. Um, and we, listen to this, still to come, dating in 2021, how the pandemic and social distancing can affect relationships. We're going to break down the new trends. Okay, plus <laughs> Lauren Kelly is getting her groove on today. She's got details on how your kids can get involved with the National Youth Theater's spring shows and dance classes. Houston Life will be back in two minutes. Okay, so if you're looking to find love in the new year, Bumble recently put out a list of dating trends you might expect to see, including new dawn daters and those who find themselves newly single mm -hmm. uh, after 2020. So there's names for these, okay? okay? Hardballing is one of them, and it's basically cutting out all games and people who aren't right for you. You're so, supposed to do that anyway, though, right? I think so. I guess now more of an emphasis because of what everyone experienced in 2020. Exactly, like get a rid, getting rid mm -hmm. of like the toxicity in right. your life, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Astro Love, I thought this was like Astro, you know, like people who love Astros. <laughs> <laughs> Looking to the signs to see whom you might be compatible with. Oh, your zodiac signs, yes, okay, Yes, yes, right. so you know, like two fire signs aren't mm -hmm. great together, mm -hmm. but who knows. And even, is it Loke dating? Loke dating. Are people who basically date that live nearby. So if you live far away, they're immediately eliminated. Okay, but what if the choices aren't so great for those people who are living? I guess near then they you. don't date, which is quite sad. Yeah. I don't know. I see Orlando and I were a blind date, mm -hmm. and I always want to fix people up. I did fix someone up. And they're still married today. I think they're like 22 years married. Wow. And so that's like my claim to fame. Fame. And so Orlando, I'm always trying to set people up, but. Well, that's a big feather in your cap because normally when somebody tries to do that, it's, it's a bad. complete nightmare. Total it's a total bad disaster. News. Um, and so that's our question of the day. Yes. We want to hear from you. Tell us about the most awkward date that you've ever been on. Have you been on a few? I have. Of course. Yeah. Anything? You... Nothing that I care to remember. No. It's been a long time. I went on a date. This was in Midland, Texas. Uh -huh. I actually had to call Rachel McNeil from the bathroom <laughs> and say, come get me. I, I was, you know, page me because if this is weird, then, you know, because he picked me up and it, this is before social media and Uber and all of that, right? So I'd, because he got plastered. Oh my. Completely sloshed before the dinner, the entree even arrived. So Rachel to the rescue. She Rachel medevaced you out of there. I left. And then he like came out, left a note on my door and was like, "Hey, can we go out again?" I'm thinking, "You're crazy pants." How so did you were in home? Midland. Yes. So you ghosted even before ghosted was a thing. That's ghosting. I did. You did. You see, oh, way ahead of your time. I know. Oh, look at that ghosting in 1999. <laughs> okay, if your kids love musical theater and performing on the big stage, then the National Youth Theater Group just might be the perfect place for that. I think so. Lauren Kelly is in Tomball this afternoon with info on how you can get your kids of all ages involved. Hey there, Lauren. Hey guys, look at this. I finally made it to the big stage. <laughs> After so many years of attempting to try out for musicals and plays, 
I never got a roll, but I'm making up for it right now today. We're at Lone Star College in Tomball. They've been so nice enough to have us out. And I am here with one of our friends, Erica Gallego. She is here with NYT. Hi, Tell everybody how long you've been with the company. Oh, I've been with NYT for a couple of years now, but I just moved into the directing position, so it's okay. been pretty fun. So you've been dancing and you've been instructing. Yes, 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 yes. From dancing, since you were like singing. this big, right? Oh, I actually have been, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of crazy if you watch yourself and you look back and it's like cringy and you're, oh, it's okay. So no, you, guys, you guys specialize in dance classes and theater Absolutely. and music and bright lights and big stage Absolutely. and so much fun as a family, right? And, and of course our friend Sam here has also taken part in, in some of the productions you have coming up, which Absolutely. are a huge plays. You're doing Newsies yes. and I saw Annie in High yes. School Musical. All and West Side Story. And West Side Story. And we're doing a camp that goes from the songs of Dear Evan Hansen, so it's going to be lovely. Oh my it's goodness, really all great. of my favorites. And do you guys teach the choreography and you teach the music? We do, we do. And that's actually how I got started was uh, through dance first and then directing second. So it's really great. We ask our kiddos to sing, dance, and act all at the same time. So cardiovascularly, it really requires a lot. What is the age group of the kids? Yeah. It starts at how, how old and goes to how old? Eight years old to 19. Eight yeah, to 19. Question. That's a really big gap. So there's really a lot of places yes. for tons of kids, right? Yes. So Erica, Sam, what I'm going to ask you to do is hang around. I'm going to attempt to relive my high school days. I'm going to learn some choreography from one of your productions on Perfect. this beautiful stage and I will get you guys all the info on their spring dance classes for NYT coming up a little bit later on the show but can we get some going absolutely we, absolutely you're back to Andy and Courtney it. in studio you're gonna open right, up you and you're gonna kick across your body oh here we go open step oh. ball change oh yeah oh, that's it a good okay. step ball okay. change oh, <laughs> I'm on the wrong foot <laughs> yes <laughs> I you love it. Me. It's the yes, basis yes, yes, of all good dances, Bravo, Lauren. Bravo, yes. Awesome. Okay, I can't wait to see the rest of the choreography. <laughs> oh, <no. Good> <laughs> Fantastic. All right, and we're going to check back in with Lauren a little bit later on in the show to see the moves that they are going to create. So when we come back, guys, from the floors to your garage, clean and organize your home with four must-have items for the new year. And it is a sport jam-packed with adrenaline, how one local racer prepares to take on Monster Energy's A. AMA Supercross. Houston Life will be right back. Okay, the script says if cleaning and organizing your home is on your to-do list for the new year, of course it is, but only for January, right? Just kidding. But you know, sometimes it's hard to figure out where to start, but today we've got you covered. Joining us now with four must-have items is home improvement and lifestyle expert and friend of the show, Catherine Emery. Happy New Year, sweets. Good to see you. Happy New Year. I mean, we're all cleaning and organizing, especially in the new year. We all want 2020 to be fresh and new, yes, right? Let's yes. get it done. Absolutely. Okay. And you always have the best things. What should we start with? Thank you. So I suggest that you get organized and you should organize that garage because if you organize your garage correctly, you can use it as another functional room in your house. So you're going to want to invest in a system that you, with multiple options that you can personalize just for your family part. So I have with me today, this is the Rubbermaid Fast Track Rail Garage Storage System and it's awesome. So you get started with their seven piece set and that's everything you need. You get these two support beams, and then you get a ladder utility, a cooler, a power tooler, and a scoop hook. So I have, I put up a shovel, I put up beach chairs, tennis rackets. Here's the beautiful thing though, and see, aren't these pictures great? It just makes everything so organized. Here's the beautiful thing. You can keep adding to it based on what your specific needs are. So you can add, you can see there, there's shelves, there's bins, there's cabinets, there's racks, there's small and large hooks. You can put bikes up, sporting equipment, balls, gardening equipment. Just a great, great system that I found at Home Depot, and I love it. It makes everything so convenient in the garage. Absolutely, and I think the garage is the place where we need to park our cars, right? Sometimes we just leave them out because we have too much stuff, or we keep exactly. rebuying things because we can't find it in the garage, and that rail system is perfect. It's, yeah, it's right there, right at your hand, right when you walk out, so it's perfect, or wherever you put it. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about, you're always about the smart things in our home, and you have one now to help it keep it clean? Yes. So <laughs> I went out and I bought four different robotic vacuums and tested them all, and I wanted to tell your viewers about the one I love the most. This is the Shark IQ robot vacuum. There are so many amazing things, Courtney, that you'll love about it. Number one, it's bag. it has a bagless self-emptying bin. 
So that's, it gives you about 30 days where you don't have to think about changing the bag, emptying the container, you know, you have to pick them up and like shake them out. It methodically goes row by row and then navigates room by room. You can, here's, here's my, here's my, uh, my B roll here. This is my house. <laughs> um, but then it navigates room by room. It lets you choose no go zones. So for example, in here, I've got a bunch of lights. I don't want it coming in here. Um, when it gets full, it finds that dock and it empties whatever's in there recharges and goes back out. And of course, you know, I love the Smart Home Connect. Now, see, it's cat friendly, as you can see, there's my cat walking around, but it's got Smart Home Connect. So you can schedule it for when you're away. You can have Alexa or Google Home get in the action. Hey, Alexa, start vacuuming. Just so many great, great features. Definitely highly recommend one, makes it so easy to clean. Okay, real quickly, I see in your B-roll too, that you have some on carpet, some hardware. Hardware, this works on all surfaces? All surfaces, yep. It, it actually can tell when it's changed surfaces and kind of and, and adjust the suction power. Okay. So it's awesome. I love that. Self-cleaning stuff, got to have it. Okay, you also recommend a product that can be reusable to help us save money. Yes. So have you invested in microfiber yet? You know what? I have not, girl. Fiber cloth. Oh, God, you have got to do this. This is the one thing you need to do because unlike cotton cloths and paper towels, microfiber actually acts as a magnet and it effectively removes dirt, dust, and debris. So I have here with me, these are the Quickie job site heavy duty microfiber cloths. Grab them at Home Depot. You can see I clean everything with them, Court. So glass, windows, cars, outside patio furniture, floors, they're super absorbent. So they're gonna sop up water when you have a spill. And then the beautiful thing, like you said, throw them in the wash and use them over and over again. So a pack like this is gonna last you quite a long time. It is the miracle fiber you need to invest in microfiber cloths. Okay, and are we all going to look that beautiful cleaning our house? You look amazing cleaning everything, girl. <laughs> I you. just have to say that. <laughs> okay, and also <laughs> let's talk about antibacterial. You've got something to clean the floors. Smoke and mirrors there, right? Huh. So anyway, yes, yes, I do. So, okay, everybody needs to invest in a good antibacterial cleaner because we are all aware of germs this year, right? So this is the Rejuvenate Antibacterial Floor Cleaner. You obviously want to start at your floors because where do all the germs come in? They come in on your shoes. You know, I don't even want to think about it. Gross. However, I have a secret. It says floor cleaner, but if it's an antibacterial cleaner, you can clean it. You can use it to clean everywhere. So clean all those common touch areas, light switches, doorknobs, remote controls, faucets, everywhere where people are touching a lot, clean them, clean them about twice a week and you're gonna get rid of all those germs. I love it too, cause it has like a light orange scent. So I'm not a big fan of the bleach smell, but just Rejuvenate, always coming out with solid products, but that, that's their antibacterial floor cleaner and you can get it done. Absolutely. Well, you always have solid products to tell us about and your Instagram also um, for that uh, robot. I love your test testimonial on that as well. Catherine Emery, it's always okay. great to see you. Happy New Year. You too, Sudi. Can't wait to see you again. Thank you for having me as always. Absolutely. And for more information about these items that we talked about, you can visit our website at HoustonLife.tv. And now let's toss it over to Andy for a look at what's coming up. All right, Courtney, still ahead, a crafter's nightmare, the creative way that one woman chose to get revenge. And we'll check in with the KPRC2 News team for a look at what's coming up at four. Houston Life is back in two minutes. All right, well, welcome back to Houston Life. I'm Courtney Savala. It's just about 3.30. It is. I'm Andy Sirota in for Derek Shore. Great to be here with you on I'm the set so of glad. Houston Life. We finally twisted your arm to oh get you boy. on set here. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm in good company. Oh, it's so You're fun. in the driver's seat. You know, I I'm here to... It's all good. Yeah. You know, earlier we asked you to tell us about the most awkward date you've ever been on, and these some of these comments oh are goodness. hilarious. Let's start with Michelle. She writes in, a date my parents made me go on, I faked a stomach ache, and he took me home, and he stayed there to hang out with my parents. Oh, so oh. what did she do? I don't know. Hide out in the bathroom? Maybe. She had a stomach ache? I don't know. Oh, boy. All right. Kathy says, this was a long time ago. I was unfamiliar with automatic lock. And when we started driving, I thought I was being kidnapped for a few <laughs> minutes. <laughs> That's funny. Ooh. That is good. Okay, Catherine writes in, my current boyfriend and I went to lunch and our waitress came. It was his ex-girlfriend. 
She was nice, but OMG, <laughs> was it funny. Yeah, awkward, right? All right, this <laughs> last one. This is great. Okay, Jasmine says, I went out on a date with a guy who said he was 5'7". When we met, he was shorter than I am, and I'm five <laughs> feet even. I wonder if he thought I wasn't going to find out. A simple mistake, you know. <laughs> I mean, that is hilarious. So funny. We always appreciate you guys joining in on the conversation, of course. Now, we get to check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what is coming up on the news at four. Hey, y'all. Hey, guys. Oh, my gosh. You guys have us in stitches over here. <laughs> maybe, maybe he was 5'7 in boots, so who knows? There you go. Good Those point, are some big Keith. heels or being the ex that's waiting on the current. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh. I know. Oh, so man. good. I might it's have had so to good. check my food so awkward. Case, I, <laughs> it sounds like it worked out, so good for them. Yeah, okay, so it's great to see you guys. Andy, great to see you on the Houston Life set. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, flexing a different muscle today, oh, yeah. guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Courtney makes it look easy, though. Uh, oh, let's, yeah. Let's get over to Frank now and talk about our forecast. It's kind of pretty nice outside. Hey, great walk for Tex, for sure, today. Exactly. It's be perfect for the dog walk. In fact, look at this. Uh, uh, we saw this earlier. It's just beautiful. Beautiful day right there at Memorial Park. In the meantime, right now, as we look across Discovery Green, look at that blue sky. We ended up with a lot of sunshine. Temperatures 78 in Sugar Land. How about that? Lots of mid and upper 70s across the area. Humidity is up too, 50, 60 percent right now with these southeast winds, 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that's continuing to pull that in. You'll notice a little bit of a blue arrow there. We have a stationary front that is up to our north. It's not going to move here this afternoon. So we're still mild and clear. 76 at 4, 72 at 5, 69 at 6, and then 66 at 7. There's where we're finding the rain, well to the northwest of us where the stationary front is. And that's going to continue as we go into tomorrow. In fact, we've got, just to show you a quick look, and our rain and clouds future cast. This stays mostly to the north for us, and then we have a few uh, better chances for showers as we get into Thursday and again on Friday, especially Friday as that moves through. We'll talk more about this at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, some cloudy, warm days ahead all the way into the weekend. The rain chances do continue, but it's a real roller coaster. So I'll go over that at 4 o'clock. And the weekend actually is now looking a little drier, so some good news from the weatherman. Very good. Hey, hey you, you give us yeah. a lot of time, Frank. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we appreciate that. Thank you man. <laughs> All right, and here's a look at some of the other stories that we're covering today at the news at 4 o'clock. Governor Greg Abbott paying a visit to Houston's medical center to tell vaccine distribution, but we're trying to find out what the plan is to make sure that underserved communities also have access to the COVID-19 vaccine. Our Phil Archer will have a live report for you. Plus, several counties in our area saying they're receiving more doses of the vaccine. Those allotments, to no surprise, already have filled up. What we're learning about future shipments and plans for mass vaccine drive through. So as always, an action-packed 4 o'clock coming up in just a little bit. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much. You know, we were talking about awkward dates, right? From awkward dates to publicly shaming someone for cheating on them. <laughs> Stay Ooh, tuned. No. I know. This oh, is crazy. Good. So we're going to take a look at what is trending. We have a TikTok user, Holly. Well, she got her revenge on her cheating, allegedly cheating boyfriend by coding his apartment in glitter. I mean, for glitter. So glitter. this is no joke here, okay? That apartment and be like, there was some kind of craft project Listen, going on here. Listen, I, I may have gone to a concert and Kesha may have been performing. Could have been. Okay? I, I may have show. gotten some glitter on me. You still have it on you, don't you? Three years later, there's still <laughs> glitter in the laundry room. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. You know, don't cheat, you won't get glittered. You know? I don't know. Is there like a word for it? Is it glitter bombed? Is that what they glitter call it? Glitter bomb. That's good. I don't know. I think it is. I'm glad I think it's that fitting. She used like a bright blue color. That <laughs> actually made me quite happy. So it could just stain everything stay as in it, the, bathtub. the longer it sits. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, well, getting very creative in these 2021 early days. Okay. We bored text to tears. Look at him. He's just like sleepy pants. All right, guys, coming up, how one woman is reinventing herself. Listen to this after beating cancer. We have an unbelievable story when we return. So inspiring. And as we head to break, let's check in with Joe Sam for a look at what he has coming up. Hey, Joe. Oh, my goodness. Andy, Courtney, this is going to be an incredible story. This guy is absolutely amazing. Up next, Monster Energy AMA Supercross has made its way to Houston, and I caught up with this one local racer that's sharing an important message about not ever giving up on your dreams. All that and more when Houston Life returns.
Well, welcome back to Houston Life. You know, the saying goes, if at first you don't succeed, you dust yourself off and try again. Well, that's exactly the message one local pro racer shared with me as he participated in this year's Supercross competition. Thanks again for taking the time to talk with me today. I'm super excited about this. Although I can't ride myself, I like to watch you guys do it. You've been doing this for so long. You're a seasoned pro when it comes to Supercross. But when we talk about this year, you've been doing this since you were three years old. So how mind blowing is that to see where you are now? Man, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's honestly everything I've ever dreamed of as a kid. I mean. I grew up in Houston, so like going to, I went to Hare Grove Elementary in Cyprus, and uh, I remember first grade, the kids always knew me as a dirt bike kid, and and uh, yeah, just just to know where I came from, and just kept working and kept working, and there's not a lot of people that do it out of Houston, and uh, and now to be racing in the, I race in the NRG Stadium quite a few years now, and it's just like, it's honestly a childhood dream come true, and and every year I just can't believe that I, I made it happen, you know. Now, you've come across a couple of your own bumps and bruises along the road. So talk about getting back into it, because you stepped back for a while after you had to have surgery. And typically, people are frightened by that. And then going back to the sport, what motivates you? Throughout image, my amateur career, I was actually pretty injury-free. And then I turned pro, and it was like, man, the first few years, it was injury after injury, surgery after surgery. I've had, I've had nine major surgeries on wrist arms hands the worst one out of them all is i have a big plate in my head right here i had to get cut open from ear to ear and uh, mm. fractured my skull in like six places it was it was terrifying and that one that one took the most out of me to come back i almost didn't want to do it for a while well it's your passion i think that's what it is mm -hmm. that gets you to exactly. go back each and every year you just mentioned your knee surgery which happened back in august when you returned to the sport and you're still going at it competing in supercross houston how exciting is that? It's very exciting, and it's uh, it's a little stressful as well. Racing in Houston, uh, yeah, it's it's everything I've dreamed of, and it's as you know, the weather's kind of tough at this time of year, so it's been raining. I'm not as prepared as I want, but I'm so stoked to be back in Houston. Thanks again for taking the time out to sit with me and chat. I can't wait to cheer you on here for Supercross Houston. No problem. Thank you for having me. Definitely going to be cheering him on for sure. Now, the last of three Monster Energy AMA Supercross races will take place this Saturday at the NRG Stadium. And Van is more than ready to show what he's got. Now, I'll have more info on how you can check it out on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Courtney, this guy, incredible. Nine surgeries he's had, and he's still going at it. I mean, as a mom, I have to say <laughs> that that breaks my, you know, it makes me so nervous, but what an incredible athlete. Thanks for sharing his story, Joe. Do appreciate it. Well, listen to this. Imagine going through a divorce to only find out you were diagnosed with stage three colon cancer. That's exactly what happened to Barbara Majeski, who saw it as an opportunity to fight back and reinvent herself. Derek recently had the opportunity to speak with her about how she got through that time and how you can reinvent yourself too. Wow, look at you. You look fantastic, healthy. How are you feeling <laughs> today? Thanks. Well, thanks for having me, Derek. I, I feel great. I feel better than I had when I had the cancer. That's for sure. So I, I'm just lucky and I'm happy to share my story so that other people can uh, not make the same mistakes I did. Okay, so let's talk about some of those mistakes and take us back in time before the diagnosis, before the divorce. Describe to us what your life was like. You know, um, it was 2015. I had three kids, two boys, a girl. Life was moving fast. My marriage wasn't doing well, but I was suffering from a lot of stomach pains. And I kept going to the doctor saying, look, I don't think things are right. And because I really didn't present like anybody that could have colon cancer, I think I was, I was dismissed over and over again. And colon cancer is in my family. But regardless of that, I was dismissed several times. And I really was able to chalk it up. And the reason I'm so committed to sharing it is because so many times as moms, we chalk up some of these symptoms too. I'm stressed. I'm just not eating the right foods. I'm managing and juggling so many things. And um, I think that's just really important to 
um, to talk about because I did. I chalked when somebody said I was okay. I was like, okay, I'm good. Even though instinctually I knew I needed uh, further screening. And when it came to your marriage, uh, you had essentially already started those divorce proceedings when you found out that this diagnosis was indeed cancer. People often describe like the one-two punch, the double whammy, kick it, being kicked while you're already down. That must have been <laughs> a lot to handle all at once. Um, I was really blindsided that my marriage wasn't going to work. Um, I really uh, didn't see it coming, kind of had like my feet swept out from underneath me. Um, and I was really devastated. So um, it was really tough. But and you know, you, you, you rally. <laughs> You rally. Well, but you know, a lot of people don't rally. A lot of people feel like it is just too much to move forward. They're maybe stuck and hung up on the past and something that didn't work out. You decided, though, at some point, Barbara, that it was time to reinvent yourself. When did that decision come and how did you do it? Derek, that's a great question. So I was 42 at diagnosis. And when I was in the middle of treatment, I had kind of come to this realization that I think this is where my story ends. I was really struggling through chemo and I, I just, I really thought it wasn't the cancer that was gonna take me, it was gonna be the chemo. And I thought, wow, this is where my story ends. And if this is where my story ends, how are people gonna remember me? And I just went through this reflection of, you know, I want my kids to know this, that, the other thing. And when I took a hard look at it, I was not finished. I was like, wait a second, I am not done this story. There's so much I didn't do. And I would so much more, like I had this like really, this grounding conversation with myself of, I don't wanna be remembered for the car I drive and the house I live in. I wanna be remembered for so much more. So I made a vow to the universe and I said, listen, get me out of this chemo, get me out of this cancer, get me out of this chemo and I will do more. I will live bigger, bolder and better than I have before. Give me another shot at this and I'll live a life of service, which I think we were all meant to do. And so anyway, finally I did, I obviously made it to the end of treatment and I looked at, you know, I remember looking, I was like, well, I guess I better live out that vow. I said that I was gonna go ahead and you know, live out my purpose, live, you know, live a life of service. And that's when I hired a media trainer and said, you know where I want to go? I want to go on TV. It was a dream job that I always wanted. I never thought I could do it. I had all these voices in my head that said, no, I can't and this and that. I took a hard swipe left and I said, no more of those voices. They're no longer serving me. I need to go big. I made a vow and I hired a media trainer and she gave, you know, trained me. And the first show she put me on, she put me on the Today Show. If there's someone out there who maybe feels stuck, an illness like you went through, maybe a failing marriage, or even just a career change, a life change, what advice would you throw out there for people who do want to make that change and reinvent themselves? I think that's a great question. It's taking the next right step and taking those voices that are stopping you and swiping left. They're no longer serving you and change your mental game because that say you can and all those fears swipe them left. They're not working for you. You were meant to do great things. You were meant to do great things things. Swipe those negative fears left. Barbara Majewski, thank you so much for your time. We're going to see Thanks, you Derek. again real soon. Well, she is fantastic mm -hmm. and I feel like a big motivational speech there. Yeah. Amazing. And she makes a really great point. You know, stress can wreak havoc on the body. We Absolutely. all know that. And you sort of brush it off. Don't brush it off. Right. She figured that out. Don't ignore the warning signs. If you're not feeling great, Ask your doctor, call your doctor, go in for a visit. Right, and by the way, life is all about, you know, sometimes we say, oh, I have to do this. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. We get to do it, yeah. which I think is really cool. There's so much to learn from her. What an incredible story. If you want to follow along with Barbara, we do have in her information on our website at HoustonLife.tv. All right, let's send it back out to Lauren Kelly to see what she has coming up for us. Hey, Lauren. Hey guys, so I am getting my groove on. I'm learning the dance moves here. Lone Star College in Tomball. I'm here with the National Youth Theater and they are teaching me the five, six, seven, eight, how you and your kiddos can get in on some spring dance classes coming up. Don't move, Houston Life, be right back.
guys, the National Youth Theater has so many great options if your kid loves to sing, dance, be in musical productions, or, you know, just come hang out with some really cool people. I'm here today at Lone Star College in Tomball with Erica and Sam. They've been giving me the down low on all the spring dance classes yes. that you guys have to offer. What are you guys working on, though, right now? Some big shows. Yes, actually, we are. We're working on two musicals. We have Annie, and that is all the age range from 8 to 19, and then we have our Newsies coming up, and that is ages 13 to 19. What I really loved about you, though, we were talking about how dance is such a good workout outside of the gym. Yes. It's good for? It is so good for your soul. It's so good for your soul. It and is. I think it doesn't matter what you look like doing it. Yeah. It's fun to do. It keeps you limber. <laughs> you burn the calories, and it's good for your soul, yes. right? Yes, so good. So I they've been it. showing me some Newsies choreography. Absolutely. I've been working on it a little bit, and so I wanted to show y'all Let's do what it. we've been doing. So, so let's slowly go over it one more time. Good. And yeah. let's show everybody. It's going to be an okay. eight count. It's going to go one, open two, two, step three and four. Then you're going to jump five uh. and six, hit seven and eight. Okay, now we're going to do it in real time. I love it. Right. <laughs> okay. It goes five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, and four, five, oh, six, I did seven, that too and eight. And then they said, what would be a move that Lauren Kelly did? And I said, <laughs> what do I do with my hands? <laughs> I'm so awkward. Ew. I'm so it. weird. Thank you guys so much for this. was so much fun. I've lived out my dreams on the big stage with the National Youth Theater. All the information is online. I've got a link to it at HoustonLife.tv. Mm -hmm. If you guys watch this choreography, go home and practice it or come see their production of Newsies coming up in the spring. Back to you guys in studio, Courtney. We did know that today was Red Day. Absolutely. Andy, I don't know if you have on red, but <laughs> we sure do. We do. And Sam does too. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a perfect color. I love that they're doing Just Annie in. and Newsies too. So thanks a lot, Lauren. And I love the disclaimer. It doesn't matter what sure. you look like doing it. It's a judgment-free zone, basically. Absolutely. That's what the stage is all about. Absolutely. Yep. All right, Lauren, thanks so much. You know, after the break, a look at what's coming up on Houston Life later this week. But first, let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Kevin. Courtney and Andy, tonight on ET, we have the latest details on Ben Affleck's split from Ana de Armas. Plus, Dolly Parton turned 75 years young. Our ET birthday celebration fit for a country music queen. Don't miss it. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. Now, stay put because you know Houston Life will be right back. Okay, guys, coming up tomorrow, Houston Life will be off for inauguration coverage. Please join our KPRC2 news team as we break down this historic day in history. And then join us on Thursday when friend of the show, Tangie Patton of Good Taste TV, talks healthy eating with, listen to this, flexitarian dishes. We were chatting about this in the office earlier. Uh, she's going to break down this food trend and the local restaurants that are on board as well. Plus, domino artist Lily Hevish. She's going to show us some tricks to build and topple dominoes like a pro. Like a pro. Very cool. Okay, so earlier in the show, we asked you to tell us about the most awkward date that you've ever been on. We got some great responses, <laughs> There's some good right? Ones. All right, check this out from Sandy. It says, had three dates with a guy. I called his office to cancel an upcoming date, and it wasn't him. He'd used a friend's name, place of business, Oh, my word. Three days. <laughs> oh, yeah. Clearly, he had something to hide there. Okay, so Linda writes, uh, Lydia writes in. Linda? Lydia. Uh, I go to the restaurant before the guy. So he gets there, walks up to the table. First thing out of his mouth was, am I ugly? It was all downhill <laughs> after that. I bet. All <laughs> right, let's see Samantha. In my teens, I had a date in the backyard hanging out, and another date came Ooh. in through the front drive. Yikes, fast talking, <laughs> oh, Samantha. I'll say. Quick moves there for sure. Okay, Andy Sirota, we had so much fun hanging out today. Thanks for joining us on Houston Life. Thank you so much for having me, my friend. See, no need to be nervous. Been a pleasure. We had a good time. No, it's fantastic. I think you should buy that VW Bug and travel across country. Only if you go with me. Okay, I'll go. I'll go. Can we do it? We both book our vacation Let's time together. Do it. Hey, <laughs> take us what a couple weeks. I know. No trouble at all. Would we get into no, right? You've been a gracious host. Thank you. It's always great to see you, my friend, and catching up with you in person. And y'all, thanks so much for joining us again today. We will see you on Thursday. Remember, tomorrow is inauguration coverage. We'll toss it over to Keith and Christine now for the news at four.